Hi again. In the last recording, we were working mainly on the robotic arms of the Razorback. And primarily, we were looking at smoothing out some of the detail and making it look a little bit better. I'm going to continue doing some of that in this installation of the screencast. So, uh, you know, sit tight and let's see how this goes. So since the last time we were uh, looking at this lower arm, I think that's probably the logical place to start. Um, if we take this lower arm and we then just move up from where we were, we get the upper arm. So for this upper arm it's interesting because we have these two cylindrical shapes at either end. So I think it might actually be best to start with those and work backwards into the arm shape. So the center of this arm is currently set up. I believe if we were to look at a side view, we would see that the center is set up quite nicely. And then we have this cylinder, which is also at the center of the arm. Uh, I believe if we zero out its coordinates, you can see that it's it's pretty much exactly at the center. And if my modeling technique was right, we should have this cylinder up here, also at the center, but on the other end of the arm. And it looks like it is. So I think we should probably just start with these, with these two cylinders and work backwards to get our arm. That way we have a cylinder at, the e at each end of the arm. We don't have to boolean those in or model them into place. The only problem is that this cylinder right now is currently in the same hierarchy as this null on the end of the arm. So let's just move it out. So in the small arm, we now have two cylinders. Um, we can probably even ungroup those so that they're all on the same level. Once we've ungrouped them, it might be cool to point this cylinder to this other one over here and vice versa. We used that technique in the last video, I think, because that way you can ensure that they're both pointing directly at each other. So to recap, we can just select both objects and go to tags and we can apply a target tag. So I'll call this cylinder one and I'll call this cylinder two. So cylinder one's target expression looks at cylinder two and cylinder 2's target expression looks at cylinder 1. So these cylinders are now looking at each other but we do see a slight problem which is that they are currently sort of offset from each other and we can fix that by just making sure that they have the same x coordinate on the world axis. So all we have to do is go to the chord tab and just make their x coordinate the same. So this this isn't ideal, but it gives us a nice place to start. So now that our cylinders are the correct orientation, uh, because of that little trick we did where they're now pointing at each other, we can actually just remove the target tags and put them back where they were. That was simply an exercise in, in just setting them up to where they're supposed to be. So we have one cylinder there, and we have a smaller cylinder down here and we can sort of move those around to where we need them. The cool part about this is that we can now actually delete the middle arm. But before we do that, I'm actually going to make these cylinders the correct size so that they're the same width as the arm. We can just come over here and say, all right, it needs to be that wide. And just for consistency, let's make them the same width. So this cylinder currently has a height of 2.032. And let's just copy and paste that height to the other guy. And let's actually make cylinder number 2 have the same x position as cylinder number 1. So it's 0 0.004. Negative 0 0.004. So those cylinders are set up. And I think I'm pretty confident that we can just delete the small arm object now. And we now have these two pivot points that we can model in between. Just to make things more clear, let's hide everything except those. Let's 
go to polygons with lines and we can see now that we need to bridge these cylinders so we can also see that this cylinder is lacking in rotation segments we can just up that to my favorite number of rotation segments 12 it's a really versatile number and so once we have those set up I think it's probably time to convert these into editable objects so we can just select both objects and we press the C key and we have cylinder 1, cylinder 2. Now, cylinder 1 here, it doesn't look like it has any caps. Well, the caps are there, they're just all unified as part of the object. So we can select both cylinders, select all the polygons, go to optimize. Well, if you just select the command in R13, it doesn't give you the options, but if you click this options window, you can see how we're optimizing it, and that's that's fine. So once we've optimized it, all the polygons should now be stuck to each other, as they should be. And we can then sort of uh, merge these two cylinders together. So the easiest way to do that is just to connect and delete. So if you just connect objects, it creates a copy of the objects that are connected. So in that case, we got... This is the copy, but we still have our originals. I'm just going to undo. However, if we select the two objects and we say connect objects plus delete, it just leaves us with the connected version. And I think that's what we want in this case. So with our connected objects, we can now do a really simple bridge operation to merge everything together. Easiest way to do this is to go to the side view and grab your marquee selection. So I'm going to consider all of those faces for the bridge operation the normal is pointing away from us right now and I'm going to merge them to all of these faces now that's a different number so maybe I should merge them to the same number of faces it'll make our life easier in a little bit now the cool part about what we're about to do is we can just deselect certain faces involved like that and the bridge tool will take care of the rest of it for us. All we have to do is press B for bridge. Make sure that delete original polygons is checked. And then go from one corner to the same corner. It wouldn't work if I go here. It'll get all twisted. But if I go from that corner to the same corner on the other side, we get a lovely bridge of polygons. Now, if I turn the rest of our robotic arms back on, we can see that that's pretty much the same thing we had before, minus the motor parts sticking out. But there's a really cool advantage we have right now. We can now select just these faces. I'm going to select them on the other side too. See, I'm getting some gimbal flipping from my screencasting software. So whenever the camera freaks out like that, it's, it's, it's not my arm twitching. It's the recording software. So once I've got it like this, I can actually do an extrude, uh, create caps off. Otherwise, we'll get geometry here inside of our extrude. And then we just extrude a little bit. Now this is just going to be a lip where we're going to blend some stuff in. But now that we have this uh, circular area sort of reserved, it's going to it's going to afford us some really nice opportunities to clean up this geometry in a little bit similarly to how we did with this geometry sort of smooth it out and give it some nice detail so now that i've extruded that it's fine i'm going to hide the rest of the arm again and what we can do is we can actually start to get rid of some of these lines and maybe consider triangulating them in a different way so here's what I mean by that. I mean that these lines look really good. They do their job. Personally, these polygons here are a little too stretched for my liking. But let's see what we can do with those. If I select all of the inboard edges, so moving to edge view, you can see that I just have sort of the edges that look like guitar strings strung in between the two objects selected. And uh, I can then melt those edges. We get a lot of n-gons saying, hey, there should be edges here. But uh, we can do some interesting stuff here. For instance, we can do a loop cut with a knife. We can do 
one there. Let's do one in the middle. Let's do one closer to the end. And we can then start to say, okay, I'd like to triangulate this a little bit differently. So for now, I'm just going to sort of uh, say, okay, triangulation of this is going to be tricky because we need a, we need a quad. So we can do that to get our quad. But for now, I'm actually just going to triangulate it poorly by drawing edges like that. We'll see why in a bit. So what I'm just trying to do is get an edge going from the base of that cylinder out to this edge out here. And once we have that, even though it's poor triangulation, we can actually start to uh, we can start to select these edges for beveling. So I'm just going to go around the object and I'm going to select these edges. Probably need to do, no, well, don't need to do the same thing on the other side. And let's try beveling it. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but let's try it anyway. Um, bevel, one subdivision. Okay, that doesn't look horrible. It looks kind of bad up here, but we can fix that. There's that flipping again. Okay. So, first thing I see we should do is we should weld those edges like that. And we now have some funny geometry here, but we can just use the techniques we've been using for the entire video to get rid of them. Now, I'm going to undo and go back to where I made that bevel. I want to see if I do an entire loop, if it'll be a better result, because oftentimes it is. So we can just repeat that same bevel, and that is indeed a much better result. There's a lot less for us to clean up. I think the only thing we really need to clean up is we just go to these edges right here. And let's select the loop of edges we created when creating that bevel and uh, turn them to, let's, let's remove the n-gons. So uh, I believe it's UE to get rid of the n-gons. So now that the n-gons are gone, I can use my knife tool to cut right here. And then go to edge mode. I can weld this so it's a much smoother transition. And we can do something similar up here. So let's see. It's a little bit more complicated up here, but I think that's the same thing roughly. Now we do have some strange bending here because this is now a curve. Well, it's trying to be a curve. So if we look at it from the top, we can see it's kind of strange. We can try to fix that by moving these points in line with everything. So we've created a slope in the geometry, but there's no matching slope where the points come down to meet the edge. So if we create that matching slope, it can actually help to smooth the transition and sell the effect. So I've just sloped those as we think they should be, and I'm going to remove these edges that I put here. Remember I said they were just placeholder edges? It's because I don't actually believe they're the best place. Now, there is something here that uh, is a problem. If we zoom right into this area, we can see that we have an edge running next to other edges. So this is actually a super thin triangle. We can get rid of that um, in a couple of different ways. The first way is just to get rid of these edges, the long ones. So we just select them and press UZ. And what we're left with is Cinema 4D desperately, desperately trying to figure out what we're doing. We can help it out by saying, yeah, we actually want an edge that goes from here to here. And at that point it says, oh, okay, that's, that's a lot more reasonable. So we complete those edges. We now see that we have a triangle being formed over there. Triangles aren't evil, but let's just try to round out everything with some nice quads. It gives us that structure that we're after. And it also gives us extra geometry on this side. So once we've got those all worked out, we can come back over here real quick and see how we're going to quadrangulate this area. Uh, quadrangulation isn't necessary, again, but it's a nice modeling exercise. 
So before we just took a straight shot to there, but that's not going to work anymore because we've essentially almost forced a triangle at this point now. Uh, this might be a bit problematic because now the only way that we can quadrangulate that is with a shape like that, and that's not a very attractive shape. We could go this way, but that's not an attractive shape either. So I've sort of painted myself into a corner at this point, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get out. So let's just fumble a little bit as I try to figure this out. I'm thinking maybe if I skew my geometry this way. Now when I skew my geometry, I'm probably going to have to scale it up to match the things that I'm doing in the top view. What do I gain by doing that? Well, it doesn't look like I gain much, so maybe if I run it this way, I can make it work. So now we have a quad. And let's do one in the middle there. And we have the same problem. So we basically just need to run these edges to the, to the termination right here. And then mirror this curve as we go along. And we have some nice matching geometry right here. Now, as I like to do at times like this, you can take the brush tool and just smooth out the geometry. You just set it to a pretty low percentage. And then you can just smooth it out. And as long as it's on one plane, it won't move your points about too much. See, those are all still on one plane. But it will even them out. It'll, it'll even out the spacing so that you have a better grasp on that. And so we have those, uh, we have sort of more of a regular grid here. Now this regular grid seems like, well, why are we even doing that right now? Well, if we ever wanted to apply hypernerves to this object, this is going to be a big help. Um, so we have that smooth transition there. Why do we need a smooth transition here? We never actually spoke about that. Well, if this is going to be a motor, similar to this motor down here, the idea is that the daemon may have uh, engineers replace it from time to time. It might get worn, damaged, all that stuff happens. So in this case, we can actually create a motor by just extruding right there. So that's our detachable motor. Uh, we can do that a different way. We can extrude um, zero, zero distance, so the offset will be zero, we hit apply. We've essentially just created more geometry right on top of itself. And now we can scale it down. Let's, uh, let's scale it down by 10%. And now we can extrude um, just a little bit, just to give us a little bit of distance. Now we can scale it up by 10%. And we get that joint. It's kind of a fake joint, but it works. And then we can scale this out and just do like we've been doing so we can get a loop of edges right here and we can do two subdivisions convex round that out once we've got that we can probably remove the angons and we have some darkness here because of the fong shading so we just use a loop mode with a knife tool and we can just cut that right there it gives us a much better look and that now looks like a modular part of the arm. It can be unbolted and removed uh, for service. So it, so it can be serviced, rather. So, you know, the only, the only thing I see here that I may have done wrong is I may have rounded this bit prematurely because I noticed that the edges of this arm are still flat. So let's deal with that. Even though I've rounded this prematurely, I'm not going to consider that a problem. I think we can get around that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use loops, uh, ring selection to select these edges. All right, so we have those four, well, those those eight. And then I'm going to use path selection, well, loop selection actually, UL, to select that ring. And now I'm going to use path selection, UM, to select those edges around the back. And these edges right here. So now that I have a more complete picture of the geometry selected, I'm going to try to do a bevel 
that matches the bevel that's happening right here. Oh, looks like I forgot this guy. I also want to select right around the edge there. So we can just do a bevel. Let's do one subdivision. And we get our smooth arm. Let's focus up on this side a little bit. That does not look very good at all. Let's try to see why. Well, it looks like it's because of the way this joins right here. Um, let's save this selection. So here's a nice little trick. You can go to Select, Set Selection, and it creates a little tag right here. So if I select Other Edges, and I want to go back to that selection I had, I can just double click this and it takes me back to my previous selection. So this is pretty good because what I'm essentially about to do is move some stuff around. So I can use my line tool with the knife. I'm going to add a cut there, see what that does. Add another cut here, see what that does. So this is just these cosmetic cuts that help us out. Um, I'm also going to remove this edge just for now. I don't want any edges interfering with our bevel. So I can now just restore the selection. Sometimes your selection will change when you restore it, but most of the times it's fine. Okay, so now we can try that bevel again. So it looks like it's still messing up there a little bit. Let's just leave that alone. We can go in and fix that manually. I know it looks really bad, but I don't think it's as bad as it looks. Rest of the object looks okay. Some, some smoothing there and some smoothing here. So we're going to need to fix some stuff here. I'm not worried about that. Let's start with this rough area. So let's go to point mode. Weld these points together. These points as well. We're just sort of determining our our bevel profile right here. And before things get weird on us again, I'm going to select all and I'm just going to say uh, remove n-gons. I don't want any n-gons involved for this part of the process. So it looks like these polygons here are pretty wasted. We can just get rid of those. And I'm not sure what happened here, but it's just going to get confusing. So let's get rid of those as well and we begin to see what's happening. We have a hole that we need to fill. So let's just use MD for close polygon hole, fill polygon hole. And let's use the knife tool and start to try to slice this up. So we have a quad there, triangle here. Uh, you can stay for now. And we can then get this bevel profile and start to bring it back. Now where it really wants to go is back here, but that probably doesn't do us any good. Um, let's see what happens if we bring it to the front. Well, this is a quad now, so that's that's nice, I guess. It's 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 not great triangulation, but we'll see. And then we can bring this over, bring that over. I'm not actually sure what's on the other side. Um, yeah, so we can bring them over there. So a lot of the times, the answer to getting quads when you don't have any is just to add more geometry. So we're going to add a little bit more geometry here and that means that we can come to this side here where these edges are being all difficult and we can start welding and merging these into place. So I'm going to create these slices first and then I'm going to run this bevel through them. We do have a little bit of a problem. Uh, these are going to be flat because we did the cut first. So we can just lift them up to regain that curve. It looks pretty good. And I mean the only problem here is that this this is no longer a perfect uh, cylinder. And you know if this is no longer a perfect cylinder there's there's a bit of debate as to whether we should try to maintain that or not. So let's go back a few steps and see what happens if we try to maintain that. 
so yeah it looks like it looks like because of the way we did the bevel the the circular aspect of the cylinder got destroyed and I think I, I think we're okay with uh, making making this not a cylinder anymore so we can ceremoniously remove all these edges maybe it'll make our life easier in a bit and then we can do these same cuts that we did down here so let's just bring these cuts through and start cleaning up this geometry I'm just gonna be a little bit messy about it here um, let's see let's just try to bring these cuts over to where they started except now we're on the underside and just add that cut get rid of this edge I'm sort of speeding up here I don't wanna I don't want to spend too much time uh, cleaning up this this area so I'm just gonna start ripping geometry out there we go so now we can fill this hole and sort of imagine how we'd like it to look um, you can just sort of merge these things in and you can see some of these edges have really funny angles but maybe the brush tool will help us out in a bit and we I think we've done it we've sort of merged it all in so the only thing that's weird is this edge right here so I'm gonna get rid of that um, let's just do a cut down the middle so we can maintain our quads and when we removed all the n-gons earlier we were left with these strange artifacts so maybe if we get rid of these things would be simpler I'm not sure so I just got rid of them and uh, let's try doing a cut right from there to there oh it looks like we have double lines here what's going on okay so this was triangulated badly by C4D so I can just remove those and just triangulate it myself so if I cut across its quads instead of some stretched triangles it looks like the same thing happened here so we can just melt those it's kind of hard to see but what I'm because it's such a long object but what I'm doing is I'm just removing the edges that Cinema 4D placed there and I'm just going center to center to uh, see if I can replace them with some more deliberate geometry so once once we've done that we can probably just select these points here at the transition we want to be careful not to select points that are on the edge because they'll get moved and probably moved incorrectly so we can just do that a little bit to smooth them out and we select these points up here do this a little bit to smooth them out and we're getting more of a transition there which is nice um, even though it doesn't really fit with the bevel that we did we can actually just scale these points down and it gives that nice smooth transition to the back of the arm it might look a little weird yeah it looks it looks a little strange so I'm actually gonna put it back we can deal with that later and then we can just continue cutting the geometry go from the center and then we can bring this part here down and we can try to figure out how we're going to triangulate this stuff now so we can actually just start merging these points together and at this point like I said I'm just sort of rushing through I'm just trying to get this done and I'm actually trying to remove a little bit of geometry I feel like we might have too much so everywhere that I see geometry that I think we may not need I'm just sort of melting it away and I see something kind of interesting here I see that maybe this can come down here now so I'm actually gonna delete those points leave a giant hole and I'm gonna try to merge these over so 
uh, if we use the slide tool, we can bring it right there, like that. Same thing here, we use the slide tool to bring the geometry over. And then we just shorten this edge. And what happens if we fill this and then delete the edges that it left behind? We have something, something looks look, it looks pretty manageable. So we can uh, melt those edges. And uh, it looks like we have some extra geometry. Let's try taking it down this way and seeing what happens with it. So I know that we already have quads at this end, so we might be messing up what we already have. But we also have this weird fong shading issue. This might help. So we can clean this up some other time. For now, I'm just going to terminate these edges. Yeah, it'll probably be cleaner if we terminate it into a triangle right there and then try to figure out how to get rid of these triangles later on. So that way we're left with mostly quads but just one or two triangles near the edge. So this stuff looks pretty good. I'll, I'll probably try to clean some of this up off camera. Uh, the screencast is running a bit long. And I know the long screencast can get really boring and really difficult to follow. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. But uh, yeah, so this, this method of sort of uh, creating the two cylinders, bridging them, and then creating this the cylindrical areas where we're going to bring our motors off of, it works pretty well for something like this. So uh, I'm going to finish cleaning this up. And uh, until next time, see ya.